This video is brought to you by the Roll for a Combat Actual Play Podcast and their Three Ring Adventure series. And by the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series. Hello and welcome back to the Gallant Goblin. Today we're taking a look at Pathfinder Iconic Heroes Set 5. To see our review of the other Pathfinder Iconic Minis, you can check out that little eye up in the corner of your screen. Pathfinder develops Iconic Heroes to represent each of their classes, to give each one a face and an example of how the class works thematically in the game. Each one has a full backstory that you can check out using the links in the video description below. First edition character sheets are also available for most of them if you want to use one of these characters in your own game. It's a great resource for new players who may need a good example of how to come up with a backstory for their character. You can find everything in those links down below. Finally, if you don't play Pathfinder, these minis are also great to use for your player characters in any fantasy RPG system. Now, this set released in January 2016 and represents characters from Pathfinder 1st Edition. The iconic sets go in and out of stock pretty often, so if this is something you're interested in, it's worth checking in with your local game stores or setting up maybe an in-stock alert at the, on uh, the online retailers who may offer that service. So all that said, let's take a look at what we have here. First, we have Kess, the iconic human brawler. Kess grew up as what one might call a tomboy. She was born into a noble family in the city of Opara, the capital of Taudor, and was meant to be Lady Kesselandri Anasicia Vlastos, but Kess had other ideas. Now she performs in the arenas in front of thousands of adoring fans as the brawler known as Kess the Bull. The brawler class is a combination fighter monk with access to a wide variety of bonus feats to specialize themselves into different roles, but they really excel in unarmed combat. Next we have Olak, the iconic half-orc warpriest. Olak is part of the Hakdor tribe in Blisterwell, which was a large dwarven quarry and strip mine that fell under orc control, and is now the battleground between two orc tribes, the Hoskadors and the One-Eyes. Olak's parents had been slaves in the mines who died underground shortly after his birth. As a smaller boy, he was often bullied, but took on a sort of ender philosophy about fighting and treated every fight as one to the death. Now he is a quiet and brooding warrior who lives for violence, though he is not actively evil, though he only responds well to those warriors who he sees as equals. The only thing he likes better than beating up on people is beating up on his war drums. The war priest is a hybrid fighter cleric. They're generally frontline spellcasters who focus on self and party buffing. Next we have Anora, the iconic halfling arcanist from the nation of Rahadum. Anora has a hunger for knowledge and adventure that's almost unrivaled. She had a strong innate ability in the arcane and the fastidious diligence to study and hone her abilities in school. In her travels, she developed a strong connection to the god Nethus, god of magic, but because her homeland of Rahadum bans the practice of any and all religions, she found herself without a place to safely return to. She is driven by a desire to gain more knowledge and approaches that pursuit with optimism and cheer though she always harbors anxiety about what a return to her home might unleash for her. The Arcanist is a combination wizard and sorcerer. They prepare spells at the beginning of the day, but cast spells using daily slots like a sorcerer, making them very adaptable to changing circumstances. This is Adowin, the iconic human hunter, born to a pair of skilled woodworkers in the town of Crowstump in northern Nermathos. At an early age, she lost her father while they journeyed together in the woods and had to rely on her own abilities to survive in an area known as the Blight. Well, her own abilities and the injured gray wolf who also found himself trapped in the Blight. She named him Laren, and together they flourished and became an inseparable team. Enora now works primarily as a bounty hunter throughout the Inner Sea region. While she comes across as rather brooding, she can often be seen having animated conversations with her wolf companion, Laren. The hunter is the animal companion class in Pathfinder. They do wield some nature magic, but for the most part, their strategy and tactics rely heavily on learning how to effectively work together as a fighting team. And finally, we have Zadim, the iconic human slayer. 
sometimes known as the Shadow of Serenray. He is the church's solution when diplomacy and forgiveness fail, or when confronting those who are irredeemable. Zadim was part of the Cult of the Dawnflower, a militant sect of the church devoted to rooting out evil. He doesn't have a magical connection to Saren Ray the way clerics and paladins do, but he is an expert in insight, observation, and combat. The Slayer is a really popular first edition Pathfinder class, being able to deal a great deal of burst damage as a combination rogue ranger. All the classes in this set are detailed in the Advanced Class Guide, which released in 2014 and in a Pocket Edition in 2016. It's definitely a must-have book if you're playing First Edition. And as always, these minis are more detailed and better painted than your standard WizKids minis at the time, so they're excellent to use as PC minis or to represent important NPCs in your campaign, no matter if you're playing Pathfinder or D&D. Like many older sets, again, these are harder to find. This set has an MSRP of $34.99, but can often be found a bit cheaper when it's in stock. Some stores may have individual minis from this set as well, if there's just one or two that you want to track down. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of this set and which one is your favorite. I'm always glad to get more halfling and half-orc minis personally. Many thanks to our sponsors for this video. First, the Deck of Mini and their Big Bad Booklet series, a monthly zine with boss monsters for 5th edition. As you probably know, Oh, they're a fantastic resource to tell fun and varied and interesting stories with your gaming group. Each one has a totally different theme and tone. This month, come meet Valai Oxel, an ancient writhing sea monster devoted to the thrill of the hunt. Will you stop this eldritch being or be lured by its song into the depths? Subscribe today at BigBadBooklet.com. Next, we have the Roll for Combat Actual Play podcast and their Three Ring Adventure series. We talked a bit about the story of this adventure, a group of circus performers defending the land from an encroaching evil while trying to keep their circus afloat financially. But this series also has a fantastic group of experienced players, including the awesome Vanessa Hoskins, who actually writes Paizo Adventures, including a chapter of the Threefold Conspiracy for Starfinder and a chapter of the upcoming Abomination vaults for Pathfinder, which is looking really interesting. On the Three Ring Adventure show, she plays Alhara Varus, a half-elven daredevil acrobat swashbuckler. Check out her adventures on the Three Ring Adventure series over on RollForCombat.com. And thank you for watching today. We're still in moving mode here for the rest of December and a bit into January, but we'll be back with a new setup and lots of new content in the new year. In the meantime, we still have some awesome surprises to share with you. If you enjoyed the video today, you can kindly leave us a little like or subscribe if you'd like to see more. You can follow our adventures over on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. But for now, please stay safe, have fun, love each other, have a happy holiday, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Goblin.